Well, guys, welcome to Sugar on Sunday. And boy, I'll tell you what, the nuggets of encouragement, as always, that I have to share with us this week are, are absolutely amazing. And in fact, something that I think we all deal with probably on a daily basis. And, you know, if we can get a hold of these principles and really start to cement them into our spirit, boy, I believe that they have the power to really, really revolutionize the future of our lives in a big, big, powerful way. Now, what I'm really talking about here is knowing who you are. Now, this is something I think we have all dealt with in life and practically all the time since maybe we were knee high to a grasshopper when we started going to school, you know, and, you know, we started measuring ourselves against the other kids there, obviously. And then, you know, as we grew up, well, boy, in high school, didn't that have an impact if you wanted to fit in with the right crowd, obviously. And then it starts off, you know, you're like starting to measure yourself against others and, hey, what street you live on, this, that, and the other thing, and on and on and on. And of course, it just just translate all the way through life into business and you name it. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. If we can really start to understand the value of our worth and really who we are deep down on the inside, it starts to transform your life. Now, I know a lot of us, we acquiesce to it up here, right? But we haven't let it get down really and digest down in here. You know, you go out and you spend time with other people and this and that. And sometimes you walk away thinking, man, I guess I, I really wish, I boy, it would be nice to have this together, that together. Boy, I wish it was that guy or this girl or what, what, and stuff like that. And it seems to be really perpetuated, of course, by what we see, you know, in the mass media and advertising and things like that. Oh, you want to look like this. You want to, you know, smell like that, you know, with all the stuff and on and on and on it goes. And of course, we start measuring ourselves by what we drive and where we live and things like that. And what I really want to talk about in, and what the scripture talks about is that real identity of who we are and the value, the value that's in there. Now, we're going to look at a couple of passages of scripture in here. But I want, before we do that, I want us to really recognize something that is true for every human being that ever walks on the face of the earth. Look, guys, we all have things we're really great at. Look, there are some people are just fabulous communicators. They're just amazing when they get into social groups and things like that. And we all have, by the way, things that we have deficiencies in, right? You know, maybe you're just an amazing, you're just absolutely gifted in sports, but you feel like you just fumble around in crowds and you don't know how to really talk to people or stuff like that. Or, you know, you could be somebody that is just phenomenal when it comes to, you know, art, art and stuff like that. But when it comes to, you know, understanding science and math while you're struggling, I mean, we're just, we all have these things and it's just about who we are. Now, a lot of the time, we've almost conditioned ourselves to focus on those deficiencies and not focus on the substance of our character of who God really made us to be. And one thing I want to get out there is this, listen, God likes you. Did you know that? Not only does he like you, but he is absolutely head over heels in love with you. That is a true fact. In fact, he would pay the most ultimate price to redeem you and to have you in his life and have a relationship with you. And that is the whole point of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, and that means whosoever means any and all, believed in him, they wouldn't perish but have everlasting life because God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it. He sent him into the world to save it. That is the good news of the gospel. And this is where we want to see that kind of growth and maturity and healing happen deep down on the inside. Now, I want us to pull out a passage of scripture here, and this is going to come out of Romans 9, and it's a big, or, or sorry, Romans 8, and starting at verse 35. This is a huge one. Now, listen to this right here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, he quotes there. And then Paul says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now listen to this, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, did you hear that? He is saying, listen, you and I, no matter what our circumstances are, whether we're, you know, when he said nakedness there, you know, we're dealing with real lack in our life, poverty and things like that, whether it's, you know, this going on or that going on. Do you think that that has anything to do with who you are? No, it does not. You are made to be more than a conqueror. And, you know, when you think about that, I want you to get a glimpse of this verse because back in that day, they really knew what this meant. And in fact, you know, the language that he used, because the New Testament was originally written in Greek, he's talk, he gives this image. Now, back in Roman days, when they, you know, a general went out and they conquered, you know, a certain city or province or whatever, and they came back to, you know, do the victory parade and all that. What would happen is they would be riding in a special chariot. It was called a biga, and it would be led by four white horses, you know, and on the bigger would be, you know, the, the general or the leader of the army, the commander that, you know, had the victory. And right behind him, someone would be holding a laurel wreath over his head to show, look, this is a mighty conqueror and things like that. The scene was such pomp and ceremony that literally the servant that stood behind holding that laurel wreath, you know what they would whisper in the ear of the person that was in the bigger? Remember, you're only human. When Paul was, you know, saying you're more than a conqueror, he was talking to a people and a time that they understood the imagery about it. Now, we would say, hey, not only did they beat them in the last game, you know, they beat them like 112 points to zero or something like that. They just wiped them right out. That's the imagery they're saying. Look, don't even think that you're just, you just kind of squeaked by. You just made it. No, you were created. In you lives the living spirit of God and you are a new creation and you're more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. That is a powerful thing to get from here down to here. We need to know it, guys. Look, we all fall down. Look, one thing, I, I think you'd probably be amazed to hear this. Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. But, you know, I can get on here. And I can share my thoughts and feelings about all the things that we talk about on this channel and things like that. And I can get on, do it on a YouTube video. Do you know in public situations, you know, and I was at one last night and I had a great time, by the way. But needless to say, when you're in, when I'm in public situations, I, I get nervous. I probably talk way more than I, than I normally would because, you know, I just get that nervous, you know, antsiness going in there. Yeah, just that's, hey, and at times that can be a deficiency for me. Now at other times, wow, it turns out to be an amazing positive thing because, you know, I'm able to get those thoughts and those words out and things like that. And I want to be an encouragement to other people. I want people to feel when they've left my presence, they actually feel better about who they are and where they're at. That is genuinely what I desire. Now, do I accomplish that all the time? No, I don't. But you know what? I accept that's just a part of who I am. Now, Judy, Judy is absolutely gifted as a communicator and interacting with people. And I have never met a person yet that really does not like who Judy is this in, in her company. And it's the gift of God on her life. Now, I you got to accept that you're not going to be everything to all people. And that is one of the hardest things because our society is geared to try and get us to acquiesce and be liked by everybody. But that Guys, the more you try to be liked by everybody, the less that's probably ever going to happen. Because, of course, you know, people can sense that you're really just trying maybe a little too hard or whatever. But that is, it comes natural to us because we've been conditioned that way. What we need to do here is just recondition our mind and our hearts to know really who we are. And beyond that, whose we are. Now, I want to read another passage of Scripture to kind of cement this down. And this one's coming out of 2 Peter. Now, this one in 2 Peter, and it's in chapter 2. And I want you to listen to this, which is truly amazing. And he says this starting in verse 7. We're going to start in verse 7. He says, Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling 
and a rock of, 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 of offense. Well, he's really talking about Jesus, isn't he? You know, because, it, you know, people like stumble all over, you know, who Jesus is and what he is to your life and on and on and on. Well, he goes on to say this. Now, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But listen to what he says here in verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation whose own special people, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who once had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Guys, he literally is saying, look, your citizenship in another part says is not of this world. In fact, it, like we just read there, you are a royal priesthood, a nation of priests and kings. That is who we are. We are literally born again, blood bought children of the living God, new creations with the message of hope riding on the inside and where you go like jesus said look he doesn't put this treasure he put it into earthen vessels so the excellency could be of him and he said look you are the light of the world isn't that a phenomenal statement that jesus said that you and i are the light of the world and look he takes us and he puts us into places and all a light has to do is what it was meant to do shine that's it and he puts you in places where the spirit inside you just shines out. Guys, God has a plan for your life. And Jesus really does love you. That is an absolute universal fact. Now, the thing is this. We have been dumbed down so much to kind of consider ourselves. And a lot of cases, people don't even believe anything, of course, because they think all they are is flesh and bone, maybe a few thoughts, you know, with their mind and conscience and things like that. But they don't see themselves as being triune in nature, you know, mind, will, emotion, having a soul, of course, having a body and a living spirit. Look, you were made on purpose and you were made for a purpose. Never, ever, not ever, ever forget that. You were planned. It is not that you just came into this world by happenstance. I don't care how you came into this world, you know, and all that kind of stuff and how you were conceived. Not one person that was ever conceived and brought into this world what happened by mistake and outside of God's divine provincial, providential will. Not on your life. You have an absolute destiny now. The Bible says, he says of himself, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. God's will for your life is that you be blessed. Now, the thing is this, do you have a say in that? Well, of course you do. Because God is not going to force his will upon you because he draws you. The scripture says that he's slow to anger, rich in mercy, and loving towards all he has made. He's not a divine taskmaster. That is not who he is. Now, that is the way the enemy wants us to see God, if there is a God at all, that he's somehow austere, untouchable, mean, all this kind of stuff. That is absolute baloney. Not on your life. Now, think about this too. You are going to spend more of your existence outside of this body than in it. Do you think that God doesn't have a plan for you in the eternity of your future? He absolutely does. He really desires to seek and to save you, to love you, to cause you to prosper. You got to start getting that down deep on the inside. Now, how do you do that? Do you know how you do it? You start believing it. You start professing it. I am, I am the head. I am not the tail. God has made me. I am a new creation in Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. I come from a nation, a royal nation of priests and kings. I have a divine destiny. God has got my back. And what did Jesus tell us and share with us and encourage us to do and say? He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, your right relationship with him that comes through Christ. And all these things will be added unto you. He says, do not worry about tomorrow because sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Look, tomorrow, let tomorrow worry about itself. Let your relationship with God get so solidified that no matter what the circumstances are going out here, you're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. You're going to have purpose. Do never underestimate that. He made you on purpose and for a purpose. Guys, get that down on the inside. 
understand who you really are. Now, does that mean that everything in life is going to be absolutely perfect? No, it doesn't. But you know what it does mean? It means you can walk through whatever circumstance by peace. Even Jesus said, hey, don't be overcome by the world. In this world, you will have trouble, but be not overcome because I've overcome the world. That's the encouragement. That is the hope. It's not that you're never going to have a problem. You're never going to feel a little bit sad or this or that or go through you know trials and tribulations. But in those situations, like what Paul was saying there in Romans, where he said, look, we go through all these trials and tribulations and all this. Is that going to separate us from the life of Christ? No. Why? Because we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Start there, guys. Start there and accept yourself for who you are and beyond that, whose you are. Accept yourself with all the positives and all the negatives. Accept that he who began a good work in you, he's the one that's faithful to complete it. Don't allow your self-esteem and who you think and feel that you are and all that insecurity to dominate your life by believing lies about what and who you are because it's, those are just lies. You have you the value of just one human being is so phenomenal in, in, in God's creation. It is truly amazing. And you have that value and you can know your maker personally and not just as some austere God, but as your absolute friend, because that's what he calls. He said, I call you friends. Now, I hope that really encouraged you. Now, before we go, let me just take a few seconds to bless you. Father, first and foremost, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus that your love covers everything. You said in your own word, love covers a multitude of sins. And it's your heart's desire to reconcile us unto yourself. And we want to thank you for Jesus Christ who came in our place and really paid for all that penalty and took us back into that fold and made us into those new creations. Lord, I pray for anyone who's listening and hearing this, that they'd understand, number one, that you made them on purpose and for a purpose and that your heart and desire towards them is good. Father, I bless them in Jesus' name. I thank you for healing and provision and Lord, meeting them at their point of need right where they are. Father, you are the healer of broken hearts. You're the restorer of hope. God, you, you make a way where there is no way because you are faithful to your own word. Lord, I thank you that that's the character that you have and that love that you have over us. May everyone who is hearing and seeing this respond in faith to the gift of your grace in their life, I pray. And Father, bless them and may they know the value of who they are in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And guys, I sure hope you got some amazing encouragement out of that. And I'll tell you what, it's something we need to remind ourselves and reinforce in ourselves practically every single day. And if you have to do that even multiple times a day, do not get down on yourself for doing it. Just build that feed that on the inside. Now listen, there's two kinds of pride, right? There's arrogance that puts us above everybody else. But you know, there's another kind of pride. You know what it is? It's called dignity. And that's what we're talking about. Having a healthy self-esteem of who you are and who you are. That is big. Now guys, I'll tell you what. I think next week, I can't wait for it. I think we're going to see some amazing things happen in this space. And until then, when we touch base tomorrow for our coffee chat on Monday, I pray you have a blessed and encouraged Sunday. And until then, guys, have a fabulous one and take care.